this is Jonathan and welcome to this case study. In this case study, we're going to show you how we made our client 10k with $600 in ad spend using Facebook and Instagram ads alone. Okay, let's get right into it. So what you can expect from this video, this video is a bit long, so I don't want to waste anybody's time. I want you to like learn something as well, but, like potentially uh, gain some value from it, right? Number one, there'll be no hype. So we're going to show you actual stats in our Facebook business manager and see some of the things that we did that you could potentially be using in your own business as well. Okay, number two would be we're not going to waste anybody's time. So if you're a business owner, for example, uh, you're not committed or you're not interested in scaling your business, then you can hop off this video as well. Okay, number three, we're going to provide you actionable steps on what you could do using the strategies that we have uh, kind of be teaching in this video as well. So if you want to just take notes, yeah, you can just go ahead. Okay, so... Um, this is uh, the client that we ran for, they're based in Singapore. So in terms of like market size and market saturation, it's very difficult to run profitable campaigns in Singapore. But then again, using this method, it's uh, able to do anywhere. We, we were able to achieve around uh, 18 uh, ROAS, which is basically return on ad spend, which is basically spend $1 and get 18 back, right? So for example, you scale up that ad set, you spend $1,000 in, in ad spend, right? You get $18,000 back. That's just how Facebook ads work. Uh, it's like it's like magic, right? You, just, you get something that works and that's working well, and you just scale the ad set out. So for a lot of my international audiences right here, if, um, for example, you're, you're based out of Singapore as well, you can expect even better returns than this because there's a lot of market data. There's a lot of people using Facebook. So uh, ability to scale, is much, much, uh, much more aggressive, uh, much better, much faster. Yeah. Okay. So um, just to give you a background, like digital marketing and Facebook and Instagram currently, what's going to happen in the next five years? We see is when Google Voice comes out, uh, Alexa, me and um, yeah, Alexa, Siri, etc., etc. Internet usage is going to go eighty percent to mobile usage, right? And when that happens, uh, everybody's gonna when the economy tanks, right? right basically, everybody's gonna pour their money into Facebook and Instagram advertising. The CPMs, which is basically a uh, cost per like impression, right? How much do you spend to actually go and get in front of a thousand people, right? So the CPMs are gonna go through the roof, right? The cost of advertising to a customer, cost of acquisition is gonna go up. So anybody who is not running digital right now, uh, be it what platform it is, right? Google PPC, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Display Network, etc., cetera, et cetera, uh, you're really, really losing out because in the future, it's not gonna be as cheap as it is uh, right now, okay? Okay, so what businesses usually do now for Facebook and Instagram is that number one, what I see uh, commonly is like they spray and pray, right? They just put something out there and they pray that it works, right? There's no qualified leads, right? They go just uh, watch a YouTube video showing how to set up an ad and then they know how, they think they know how to run Facebook ads and stuff, right? That's number one. Number two is that they are inconsistent customers, right? Uh, some people don't even want to do marketing, right? For example, uh, they, uh, they put out an ad Right, they think that they're, they're getting customers. They think they're getting like four dollars, six dollars leads. Right? Are they actually qualified leads or not? Right? There's no pixel on their website. Meaning, uh, a pixel is basically a line of code on your website such that uh, they're able to track customer behavior over and over again. Right? People are just spending money and pouring money down the drain um, by doing and spending money on Facebook ads and stuff. But then, if they have no pixel installed, then there's no ability to recapture those customers that are potentially already interested in your brand, but have not really expressed right uh, their pre-qualified fight uh, leads, right? They did not become leads yet, okay? So, and then after all this happens, usually what uh, I can see is that uh, they get really, really frustrated. They don't know how to run ads profitably and then they say Facebook ads just don't work. But Facebook is a $40 billion company and uh, so, um, yeah, they actually do work. Okay, so let me just give you an example of like what I was scrolling through, right? So like this is just my own personal Instagram and I was scrolling through and I saw this ad and this is like um, a prime example of what a bad ad is, right? So I blurred out every, everything, so no problem. So I show you like what is a bad ad, right? This is the bad ad. It's not engaging, right? What is the product, right? When I actually read the ad copy and stuff and I saw the photo, I still don't know what they're selling, right? Number three, there's no call to action, right? I'm, I'm learning more. Like there's a CTA, that's the standard one that uh, Facebook gives. But why am I learning more about? I don't even know what, what the product is, okay? Uh, number, uh, number four would be there's a bad copy, right? So it starts with imagine this, what if you could? And then it's just uh, some things that just error, error appears, right? So how can you expect your audience to convert on something that uh, you can put out, but the audience doesn't even understand uh, what you're putting out, right? I don't, I don't know what the product is. I don't know what you're selling. Okay. The next thing is that 
this is like one of my first few times seeing it, right? Is seeing it, seeing this ad. So I know they're targeting cold traffic. However, they're not in the position to build rapport with me. So how am I supposed to convert on this ad when there's no rapport being built, right? I don't expect to, to like connect with the messaging, uh, the context, and as well as the ad, the ad copy itself, right? So it's basically uh, business owners that are putting out ads, they're literally just throwing money away, right? An impression is something you pay for, and this is a wasted impression. Okay, so uh, I give it the analogy where advertising is like dating, right? So how do you expect someone to marry you on the first date, right? If you come up someone to someone on the street and then you just say, uh, please give me $1,000, right? That makes no sense, right? How can you expect someone to give you money, literally buy into your brand when you haven't built any relationship? Right? That's what I see a lot of people are doing with these type of ads. They just throw things out there and they expect it to stick. Right? That, that's not going to work. That's not how um, even like advertising in the digital space is just like dating. Okay? So like the current sales process that is broken, right? That a lot of uh, people and uh, business owners and uh, like potential clients that I meet with do is that, okay, they're good. They're going digital. They're going Facebook, Instagram. They're, they're buying PPC. Uh, they're putting out content, right? Some of them. Okay, then it leads uh, the lead that they generate, right? Then they bring them into the sales process, right? So for example, they've already captured the lead, right? Or brought them to a web page and stuff, right? So it's basically saying, uh, dear Mr. Customer here, okay, so we brought you this web page. Are you interested, right? They come to the page, uh, they CC, look, look, and then they just leave the page, okay? So when that happens, move on to uh, part three, this becomes a very unreliable customer acquisition uh, phase because what happens is just uh, all these people come to the page, they leave, they don't convert, and that's about it, right? It's like it's like window shopping, right? You go to someone's store, you look at someone's handbag and stuff, and then you look at it, and then you kind of say it's nice, but I won't buy it, and then you just walk away. And that that store owner is uh, never able to recapture those customers again. You're never able to build rapport with your brand, and you're not able to sell product, right? You're not able to move and convert. Okay, so like what I said previously, it's an unreliable customer acquisition method and the ad spend is uh, unreliable. You're not profitable. So if you have no cash flow, you cannot scale your business, right? Okay, so basically uh, the maximum profit uh, like system, right, is that you have great, okay, this is like just minimum, right? On your ad copy itself, your audience segmentation, uh, your ad copy itself, your offer is enticing as well as your testing. You are rapidly, rapidly and aggressively uh, split testing everything to see what works, right? Um, scale up your winning ad sets as well as kill, kill your ad sets that are unprofitable. Okay, when that happens, you put that together with the power of the pixel tracking, right? So you're able to really follow these customers or potential customers of yours and you're able to retarget them all over the internet. Okay, what this really happens, right, is um, you're able to really lower your cost of CPMs. So like I said previously, the cost for 1,000 impressions, you're able to really recapture people who already have pre-qualified interest with you, right? So then you're able to build rapport with them and then you're able to drastically lower the cost of advertising because they already know you. You're able to build the relationship with them. It's not cold traffic. Okay, so what that means also is, is a definite sale, right? The ability for me to track you on every single action that you input or don't input, right? Literally watching a video, like to a certain amount of length, literally I'll show you, is literally giving pre-qualified interest to a product that I may potentially sell, right? So every potential lead, right, that shows pre-qualified interest will not become, they will definitely become a customer one day uh, because of the systems that we have put in place. Okay, so a lot of the common problems that I've seen, uh, just a summary, just the list down. Number one would be like just the most basic things. People don't even have their pixel installed, right? Like I said, pixel is a line of code that tracks customer behavior. You're unable to recapture all these people that have already come onto your website or done something with your brand, interacted with your brand, and all of this data is so, so powerful. They are really, uh, that's where the money is. The, the money is in the follow-up. Okay, the second thing is spray and pray, right? So people just put out one Facebook ad, right? One Facebook ad. And they expect it to just turn magic, like just make money, right? It doesn't work like that. You need to split test, right? You need to put out multiple ad copies, test aggressively, test every single placement, right? What we usually do is uh, for every single type of placement, we put a different optimized media, uh, change the ratio, uh, change the copy a bit, right? Change the creative, the placement, and really, really envision what your ideal customer persona is such that you're able to really target the customer and speak their message. Okay, number three, like I said, no follow-up, right? People who have already indicated to you that they are interested in your product. For example, you run an e-commerce store, you've already, uh, someone has add to cart, 
right? You already tracked the ad cut. Why don't you retarget to those people saying uh, something like, did you forget something in, in, in store, right? So there's something like personal messaging that is very, very effective and will really, really improve your conversion, right? A lot of people are leaving money on the table. They have already data, but they can't do anything with that data. Okay, so last thing would be cold traffic, right? Like I said previously, people are just uh, targeting the cold traffic. Watch one YouTube video says, I know how to run Facebook ads. And then they spend a bunch of money on Facebook ads and nothing works, okay? So that's not how it works. You don't always run the cold traffic. If you have an email list, for example, you can upload that. I'll show you that in uh, the, few, the next few slides. Last thing would be, there's simply no time, right? Facebook is like incredible. Uh, they have an incredibly steep learning curve. Like the business manager seems simple, the UI seems simple, but actually uh, the algorithms change all the time, right? And uh, people don't have uh, time to copyright, right? Uh, these business owners, uh, you are busy with the things that you need to do, like fulfillment, uh, sales, uh, like things that like matter, employee, HR, there are a lot, a lot of other things. So like Facebook is constantly changing. So uh, these are things that um, people just simply do not have time to bother with. Okay, so what I mean by like retargeting and stuff, right? So Facebook is actually an incredibly powerful tool. You can come into the business manager and add in under the audiences tab, as you can see here, you can create custom audiences. So people who have visited your website, uh, people who have gone to your app, right? Uh, offline activity, I won't touch on it so much. Uh, engagement, uh, people who have watched your video 50%, 90%, engage with your Instagram business profile. All of these data points that Facebook collects, right? They, they collect an incredible massive amount of data. You can all use all this data to really retarget uh, people that already expressed interest in these data points. Okay, so like uh, as previously said, uh, engagement as you can see here, engagement, uh, for example, people who have already watched a video of yours, put in a lead form, uh, visited your own Facebook page, your own business profile, attended an event of yours, right? So then, uh, afterwards, you can create a custom audience right here. So after you create this custom audience, the Facebook will immediately populate these audiences for you such that you're able to really run ads, specific personal messaging to these audiences make it incredibly profitable, okay? So the process is actually very, very simple, right? For example, if you just installed your pixel on your website, you have absolutely no data, really try and get as much data as possible, right? Advertise to cold traffic, get your low CPMs, and then pre-qualify your audiences. Once you're doing that, you're really refining audiences. So when you're refining your audiences, right, you're using your custom audiences to really build up different things, right? So for example, 95% of your video, 3,000 people have logged on and uh, seen 95% of my video. So we can't Constantly what we do is create lookalike audiences from these custom audiences such that uh, your audiences that you're targeting become much more refined even if you have little data to start with, okay? So refine and then engage. So engage, create uh, like obviously uh, engaging ad creative, right? Things that people actually want to see, right? Like this ad just now we we're showing, it, it doesn't engage anybody, it doesn't talk to anybody. So uh, obviously video would be uh, cheaper to run nowadays. However, if you have just have a photo, just have something that speaks to your branding and it should be fine. It works well for us as well, okay? So afterwards, refine, engage, sell, repeat this process and you will see tremendous amount of profits. You will see the real power of Facebook ads. Okay, so because you're process driven, right? You understand what you're doing. You are constantly refining, refining your audience. You're able to crush your competition because your competition is all running on cold traffic right now. They're not even running on speci specified uh, uh, segment, audience segmentation. So what you're doing is really lowering your CPMs and really increasing your rapport with your customers. Okay, you'll be able to potentially see these conversions over like, for example, two to three months if you constantly repeat this process, right? People who don't do this, they're literally saying, no, I don't want an additional, I would say like minimum 10K in revenue per month, right? I'm not interested in growing my business. It's really uh, dumbfounding to see why people are not doing this. Okay, so basically how to really dominate your competition, right? You've got these audiences, you're using the system, refining audiences, how do you dominate your competition? Okay, what we call in the marketing sphere uh, is called top of mind awareness. Basically, you're able to completely dominate the online space and your customers will only think of you, right? I log on to Facebook, right? So I am scrolling through something, I see an ad. I see an ad there, I watch 95% of my video. For example, I'm the customer, okay? Now I'm the, uh, you're doing your advertising for your company and now I'm gonna retarget that person on, on Facebook again, on Instagram again, on Google Ads, uh, Display Network, on YouTube. I am everywhere on the internet, right? 
I may not be able to purchase your product at this point in time, Mr. Customer. But in the future, when I do actually want to like purchase this product, I definitely know you are there. I definitely know you are the number one option that I'm going to go to because I see you all the time. Yeah, so that's basically top of mind awareness. And if people don't believe top of mind awareness works, um, you can see it in the numbers, right? If you're always like on the top of someone's mind, right? People are not willing to buy now, but they're willing to buy in the future. The money is always in the follow-up. Okay, so that's basically how to dominate your competition in the online space. So I'll just summarize my points. Consistently be in front of your customers, right? Even if people who have purchased from you already, consistently be in front of them because there's people who have already bought from you are more likely to buy from you again. It's cheaper, right? It's cheaper to target these people again because you have already built a rapport and they trust you. Okay, number two, top of mind awareness, said before. And number three, you just basically own the internet, right? Between Facebook and Google, they basically own the entire internet. All of the real estate that you can see is basically owned by these two companies. Okay, so the case study that we're gonna be going uh, through today, I give you some context, right? We are selling a front end offer of around $55 per product. So after this two weeks trial, uh, this $55, right? Uh, the customer will be upsold and then uh, we will retarget them uh, using, yeah, of course, retargeting. Yeah, then they'll, they'll be worth uh, at least around $400 to a $1,500 package. So, um, of course, like the barrier of entry, the friction to the purchase is tremendous because I wouldn't say it's a high ticket product, but it's quite high ticket, right? $400 on an e-commerce store is a bit uh, high ticket. Okay, so that's basically uh, it. We generated around 10K. It's a small amount with Facebook ads, but uh, the reason why I'm showing you as a case study is because I think the ROAS is very good, right? E-commerce is usually like two to three ROAS, what we're seeing, but we managed to uh, achieve uh, 18 ROAS, right? Which is quite unheard of. I've never seen anything so tremendous before. Yeah, and the best thing is that um, it's a fresh ad account, right? So we've never even run ads before. We've never had a pixel installed until uh, our agency took over and installed the pixel. So like uh, these numbers are just literally the beginning of what is possible, right? We're, we're hoping to scale this ad up to probably uh, 30, 40K. And in the Singapore market, it's quite saturated. But if, for example, you're overseas, international, you're definitely able to achieve just massive numbers, okay? So now we just head over to our Facebook business manager and uh, we'll show you a few stats. So right now I'm in the business manager and I'm just going to show you a few of the statistics uh, that we've gotten so far from this campaign. So uh, let me just refresh this page. Uh, okay, yeah, so during the time from December 16 all the way to around January 22nd, so give or take around uh, four and a half weeks or so. and. Um, so these are the types of numbers that we we're getting through this campaign, right? So uh, we spent around five hundred, uh, around six hundred dollars, right here, and we've gotten back around, around fifteen k in return. So getting us a ROAS of about uh, twenty five, right? Which is like absolutely insane for this type of numbers. And so a uh, ROAS basically just means if you put one dollar into Facebook ads, you're getting twenty five back. So uh, Facebook ads work at scale, meaning uh, if you put in a thousand dollars, for example, then you just get back twenty five thousand dollars, right? The algorithm just works like that. Um, uh, it's yeah, it generally is quite stable in a sense, but you have to optimize uh, as you go along. Okay, so let me just show you some of the statistics. It's not very crazy numbers if you really think about it, um, because uh, imagine if we could make so much more, right? So actually, uh, give you a bit of context for this client. This client, uh, there's a front end offer at the fifty five dollar mark, so around uh, twenty. Um, as you can see here, I think we got around ninety. Let me see, around 94 purchases, right? So around 80% of those were on the front end offer and some people actually just went uh, for the back end offer uh, immediately. So what I'm really excited about is honestly, uh, when uh, like 70 of these people uh, actually buy the 400 to $1,500 product in the next two weeks or so. So in the next two weeks, uh, the $55 uh, package will expire and then we can upsell them on the more expensive high ticket items, uh, 400 to $1,500 products, which is potentially could be around 60,000 to around 90,000 on Facebook ads alone, right? So as you can see, like Facebook ads is a very, very scalable platform uh, if you really know what you're doing, right? So in terms of uh, people who have reached around 18,000 people and um, 
I guess what I'm really happy about is uh, like cost per purchase, right? So imagine uh, we were selling people at right $55 products to around four, like $400 products, right? And if you're getting around six to $5 per purchase, uh, which means the profit margins are just insane, right? Not only that, like um, if there are 93 people who have uh, purchased this product, that's just uh, yeah, 94 people, yeah, right? It just means that these 17,000 people already know our brand and are very acclimated with us because we have uh, really, really targeted them, targeted them very, very uh, aggressively. I mean, we've got them uh, around like four frequency, right? So we've shown the ad to the, each person around four times and we're definitely gonna like scale that up so that uh, it's becoming more profitable. But then again, like we've only spent this amount because I mean, uh, every client has different budgets. So the fact that uh, we can produce is our result and um, it really gives us uh, leverage to really ask for a bigger budget as well. Yeah, so as you can see here, I mean, uh, people really care about, oh, what's your cost per click? Or what's your click-through rate, right? It really doesn't matter. As you can see, like our stats were very, very average. In terms of um, what really performed well, let me just show you and uh, get into the ad sets, okay? So, I mean, uh, I split into two different campaigns because uh, they were two different audiences so that I, I know who I'm targeting okay so in terms of the ad set wise uh, what I really like to do or, or uh, what my agency prefers is that um, we do very very uh, segmented targeting right so meaning as you can see here we segment into different placements we don't just lump all of the placements into one ad set because uh, we feel that like the, the media is not optimized uh, if you have like a phone screen or whatever it's different from Facebook feed Instagram story so we really like to optimize the media so um, the user and the customer has the best uh, user experience yep so as you can see um, in general Facebook is more profitable for us than Instagram but then again Instagram uh, we're targeting in general uh, people who are younger so uh, the spending power is a bit different as well but then again like the ROAS still uh, stays the same and um, yeah so we're quite happy about that so as you can see here right uh, we are running till the end uh, Facebook feeds and Instagram feeds that were active however uh, the Facebook suggested feed we turned it off after a while even though it, it collected sales uh, over the time period and around 66 ROAS which is a bit insane right but then uh, the thing is that uh, the first few days or so when we were testing, uh, instead of Facebook suggested feed was not so profitable. So that's kind of the thought process of uh, how we, we went about things. Yep. Okay, let me just show you. Uh, okay, so let me just go into one of these, uh, the Facebook feeds, right? In terms of like split testing and stuff, um, we do very, very aggressive split testing for our clients, meaning uh, we have to really uh, pump out a lot of different types of creative, different types of ads to see what's working because uh, that's how Facebook ads work, right? If you just find one winning ad set and you scale that, uh, that you, then you become very, very profitable. So that's really what happened in here. You just have to test and see what the market likes, right? Uh, really allow the data to speak to you instead of uh, making decisions based on guessing games, okay? So as you can see here like we didn't know what would happen but we launched around one two three four five six seven seven ad sets uh throughout this uh throughout this placement on facebook feed and then we tried different things different targeting and then uh as you can see our relevant scores were around nine to ten right it's on a scale of one to ten meaning uh how relevant is your ad uh to the customer that you're portraying to right so if you're getting like nines and tens actually we were getting tens at one point uh we already hitting our messaging right on the dot right so instead of like keep trying to push and uh sell 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 uh what we really focus on is giving value to our audience and creating and building a relationship, which I think, uh, which is why I think we perform so well uh, on our ad sets, right? So the fact that like, even though we were running, uh, if I remember correctly, at $22 days, spending $22 per day, which is like, very, very little compared to other companies and stuff, we are still outranking and outbidding them because our creative and our visuals, as well as our messaging, we are just on point, right? We really understand uh, the customer persona. Yep, okay. So uh, as you can see here, so as you can see, uh, the first ad here is definitely the most profitable and the rest of them have subsequent sales and stuff. So uh, really find your winner and then just ride that wave and then uh, scale that ad, ad budget up, okay? Uh, I guess another tip that I can share with you is that I really, uh, yeah, uh, the, the tip, yeah, it's basically, um, I we really like um, Facebook's budget optimization uh, feature. So they recently introduced it, I think, uh, in 2018, you can have, uh, you set a budget and then you just allow Facebook to optimize uh, wherever your budget goes in in instead of like manually, uh, manually changing the different types of ad sets that you want to put into your campaign, okay? So let me just show you as well uh, what we did on the Instagram side of things. Okay, let me just show you, give me a second. Okay, so an Instagram feed, uh, we didn't want to uh, spit test photos at all, okay? 
uh, we weren't so aggressive because we had one video creative and then we tried different things. But we found that in general, my agency likes to just use uh, videos for Instagram because uh, I'm a millennial as well. And I kind of understand from the Instagram experience that people don't like use, uh, like photos won't captivate you, I feel. Like, uh, if for example, if you scroll on your feed, right, you don't really stop to see a photo un- unless it's like uh, a super, super amazing photo. So that's why we only used a uh, video for Instagram feed. And I mean, it worked very well. You can see CPMs were, were really good. Uh, averaging five dollars cpms and then uh let's see yep so it, it was the 24 row s here for the instagram side of things okay yep so that's the one of the budgets for our one of our lookalike audiences and um as you can see uh yeah we split test into different placements and i guess the last thing i can show you from this campaign is like retarget right so these are we retargeted people who came to our website so uh really segment our audience into very very different uh, pixel events so uh like the 25 percent 50 50 50 percent uh amount of time spent etc etc and then uh we lump them into this retarget audience right here so just now it's a lookalike audience and in this case i mean it's very different because uh the audience size is very very small so in terms of um your cpms your cpms will definitely be higher in terms of what is how much you're spending to get back these audiences because the audience is so small um it's very very hyper targeted so facebook generally charges more for that so as you can see uh over the time period we saw that i mean these style feeds uh, these style placements weren't working so well so we definitely just turned it off and killed the unprofitable ad sets but then we just let this facebook feed run uh, throughout and as you can see like five dollars per purchase and then we uh, let's see what statistics so yeah it's a re- like re- really not bad re- return on investment here uh, a 23 row s so uh in general like as you can see the campaign this is how we can uh, structure our campaigns and um yeah we're really happy about this campaign because uh, we spend little money but we got uh, very good returns right and the thing is um as, as time goes by, uh, we understand that also there is more of the data that's coming in through the pixel. And since the, this was a fresh pixel, this is literally only the start of what we can do. So if we're able to spend uh, like upwards of $1,000 every single month, and uh, I mean, do multiple thousands, then it'll be really, really profitable as well, okay? So you can just imagine what the power of Facebook ads is. Uh, really hoping to scale this account to probably like 100K or something. So, uh, so what is next? Okay, so number one, you kind of have two options. You can figure these things out of your own and you can potentially waste a lot of company resources and advertising uh, budget, right? Or number two, you can allow us to help you. We can work in tandem with you such that you're ready to uh, ability to achieve your revenue goals as well as uh, really get the results that you desire, right? Ultimately, uh, businesses are for profit. You want a conversion coming in. Uh, You want to see numbers coming in, right? We live in the business manager, so we understand the algorithm and stuff, and we are really, really able to help you. Okay, so, but things to note before, okay? We, OXG Media, uh, my agency, we only work with people who are committed business owners, right? If you're not committed, if you don't want to scale your business, like, we don't want to help you as well. We don't want to help people who don't want to help themselves, right? So, if we actually take you on as a client, uh, promise uh, we will give our 100% to you. Yep, and we expect you to do the same. Okay, number two, we want to help, okay? So what that means kind of is like, if your pixel doesn't have enough data, right? For example, we understand brand awareness, right? Uh, Traffic is important, but ultimately we are focused on conversion and building an automated system for you to uh, generate traffic and results in the long term, right? We're thinking long term for you when we work with you. We don't want a short term uh, relationship and such that it breaks apart and that doesn't make sense for us, right? We want to provide you results that you really desire desire okay so number three would be uh we're not magicians as well okay so for example if your pixel literally from day one uh you have no data as well right we cut we will communicate that it's an extreme challenge to really really get the results that you want and uh, we address the expectations as well but however if you have some data to work with and uh we see that and like there's a lot a lot of potential to to get a lot of lost revenue coming back uh then we definitely communicate that as well okay so we will work in tandem with you to really really maximize profit on your end Okay, this is also our promise to you. If we feel like we cannot deliver the results that you want, we will not like work with you, right? There's no point for our agency to take on you as a client, as a monthly retainer, for you to uh, to end the relationship in three months or so and be unhappy with us, right? We don't want that. We want to work uh, long-term. We want to build and scale your business. So uh, let me say again, if we feel we cannot deliver you results, we will not work with you as well. 
Okay, so that just brings me to my last slide, which is basically the mission of our agency, which is basically to help willing and committed business owners navigate and dominate the online space to scale their businesses through digital marketing. We really, really believe in this mission statement and uh, we know we can dominate the online space because uh, nobody else does top of mind awareness like that. Okay, nobody is as aggressive in the retargeting, in the follow-up, in, in just, just being engaged with your audience. Just staying in front of your customers is so underrated. People keep trying to get new customers, but why not you just treat your, your current customers that are already showing you interest the right way, right? Capture those lost sales and really maximize profit. So, I really hope you've enjoyed that case study video of ours. I know it's a bit long, but at least... Uh, you spend time at least gain some value from it, right? Really try to implement some of these strategies uh, into your business as well, okay? If you're really interested in working with us, uh, we've attached a button below at the, uh, below this video. It goes straight to an equity scheduling uh, call. Basically, you just choose your time slot as well as answer a short question there. So it really allows us to understand some part of your business before we hop onto a call. So to prevent any time wastage at all, okay? Yep, and uh, if we see that you're a good fit for us and that we potentially could really, really help you get the results that you desire, then we'll hop on a call and let's get going, man. Like, let, let's get things going. Let's, uh, let's start growing your business. Yep, so I uh, thank you so much for your time and I'll see you soon.